Hi, I'm Brian LePadding. I'm an artist, and I've been an artist my whole life. Matter of fact, I've had the pleasure and experience of working for the Air Force for almost 30 years as an illustrator. And I want to share those techniques and my experience with you. And today we're going to learn about the airbrush and how to do a dagger stroke with the airbrush. And, you know, a lot of things that I've learned in art is that uh, when you work with art, you can relay a lot of the information to real life. And I've come up with the three P's, practice, patience, and perseverance. You know, everything takes practice, even the artwork. You know, you got to learn a skill just like you learned a language or you learned how to do your handwriting. And you've got to have a little bit of patience to do anything. But what I found out with patience is that if you pick a subject matter you're really interested in art, your patience run away. It actually becomes very enjoyable. The key to that is you got to pick a subject matter that you really enjoy drawing. The other thing is perseverance. Everyone has a bad day. You know, if everything goes wrong, Take a break. Walk away. Come back to it later, but don't give up. Okay? Everyone has a bad day. So those are the three P's that I've got from learning my art experiences and carry them over to real life. Let me go over the materials that we're going to use today for this. I've got newsprint, and I've got a drawing board up here that I'm going to airbrush on that's on an easel. This is a double action airbrush. I'm going to bring this up here and show you. The double action airbrush has two functions. You push down for air, and you pull back for paint. Just like that. Now, I released the, the paint here because I don't want to shoot paint all over the place, but look. Press down, pull back. You hear the air when you push down? That's why it's double action. The air and the paint meet up here at the tip. And the way the, the paint bottle is held is by friction. You actually push up and twist. There's no what we're going to do is the dagger stroke like I said. This is an example of what you can do. This is a, a little beach scene. The dagger stroke usually goes from a fat to a thin line. And this is kind of like a uh, uh, a tree here, like a palm tree, and this is like the water right in here, and a little bit of grass and some shadowing. I'm going to show you a technique on how to learn this dagger stroke. Let me go ahead and change the page here. Okay, now I did a close up here. What I want to show you here is taking the airbrush and go ahead and, and kind of just push down for the air and pull back, and then you'll get a dot. And then I want you to come down here and do another dot, and they're kind of lined up like that. Go ahead and start doing that all the way across. Just do, do some dots. What you do is you're pressing down for air. Constantly keep pressing the air down. And then pull back for the paint. Okay? Now we've got these dots. We're going to kind of line them up. What I want you to do is come back up here, push down, and pull back until it gets a big fat circle. And then come down and try to hit this other dot. What I want you to do, I'm going to show you an example here. What I want you to do. That's the dagger stroke, fat to thin. And you notice that when I pushed in, I went closer to the surface here, the distance between the board and here. I was back here, and then when I came down, I got closer to the surface. And I also pushed the needle forward as I come in there. You've got to push the needle forward, too, as you do that. And then when you start practicing this, it'll start coming natural. And then try it going the other direction. This is where practice comes in. You've got to practice this. Hey, look, tic-tac-toe. Okay, we're back now. Now I'm going to show you a quick uh, coconut tree. What I want to do is we'll start up here. We'll do the dot again from here. And then what we want to do is kind of do a dagger stroke and then kind of do the same thing down this whole line here. You see that? That's all I did was a dagger stroke. And then we'll go to the other side here. And I kind of arced it a little bit. Now let's try another uh, leaf over this way. And we'll try this one down here. Come up here and maybe do a little bit of grass down in this area. Now to do the shadow, what you do is you come in close and then back the airbrush out. And it does a gradation, a nice fade right there. And there you go. That's an example on the dagger stroke. What I want you to do is to practice that until you get the feel for that. And it has some fun with doing trees like this. And then you'll eventually get it. You push the trigger, always keep it down. Don't release it. So in other words, keep it pressed down. And then come into it, the air is still going. So remember to keep the button pressed down and let the air go. The other thing is, 
keep in mind the distance between the board and the tip of the brush. When I do it, I get closer toward the tip down here. I get closer to the board. Watch. Press down, keep it pressed down, and then come in close to the board. See the distance? I was way out here, and then I came down like that. The other thing is the trigger. As you come down, you've got to push the trigger forward to cut off the paint. Okay? So there's three things that you're doing at the same time. See that? Three things. Practice that. The more you practice it, the easier it gets, believe me. Okay, now I'm going to show you some of the things that I've done with airbrushing. First of all, you've gone to the beach, and I'm sure you've seen t-shirt artists out at the beach doing stuff like this. Again, this is all dagger stroke stuff. <clears throat> Here's something, uh, you know, something the boys might like. There's a nice butterfly. Again, see some of the strokes there? I have to deal with dagger strokes. Again, another beach scene, this time with color. <clears throat> Another example, and that one as well. And uh, here's something that's kind of funny as well, too. Now, with the holidays and stuff like that, you can use an airbrush to do stuff like this. You know, you've got Christmas socks that you can do. An example of freehand airbrush, just having fun with it and uh, going to town here with some dolphins and stuff like that. I really enjoy dolphins in underwater scenes. Here's another example of that right here. <clears throat> Again, you know, you incorporate airbrush along with maybe some a little bit of acrylic and stuff like that. And here's an example of uh, some dogs. Here's a portrait that uh, I have done freehand. Uh, it takes a little bit of skill. Once you get control of the airbrush, you can actually do stuff like this. And then, now here's an oil painting <clears throat> that I did. And I actually incorporated, you can actually run oils to an airbrush and incorporate a little bit of airbrushing to get that special technique that you want. And here's another example of another painting that I did airbrushing. It's a lot of fun. It really is. You'll enjoy this. T-shirt airbrush artists like, uh, there's a, you know, hey, rock and roll. That's that dude, yeah? And here's an example of, uh, here's a fine example of rat tails or the dagger stroke in this design right here. This is a lot of fun and it's easy to do. Once you practice the dagger stroke and you get it down, you're going to have lots of fun. Here's another example. Uh, of another uh, sweatshirt airbrush with horses on it and stuff like that. And one more here I got to show you real quick. We're running out of time, so I just want to kind of run these examples through. Have fun with it. And again, remember the three P's, practice, patience, and perseverance, apply to this. And apply to everything in life. So I'm Brian Lepatic. Enjoy yourself and draw on. Bye-bye now.